If you want to add cool filter effects to your photos and affinity programs, then gradient maps are something you'll need to know. They can be a little tricky at first, but with some practice, they're really easy to use, and you can quickly take your art to the next level. So let's learn about gradient maps. I recently made a video about all the adjustment layers in Affinity programs, and I'll put a link to that right here. I got lots of great comments on that video, and one of them was from Jacob. And something he mentioned specifically was the use of gradient maps. I touched on gradient maps in the video, but what he talked about was a situation where you could actually take the colors from one photo and apply it to another photo. Now I did some of that behind the scenes, but I didn't really explain it in the video at all. So I thought that'd be a great topic for its own video. So today we'll be looking at this technique in more depth. And thanks again to Jacob for the idea. Now gradient maps are supported in all the Affinity products. I'm gonna use Affinity Designer for this video just because I find it a little easier to demonstrate some things, but know that the information I'll show in this video is applicable to Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher. So first I really wanna make sure we understand the difference between gradients and gradient maps. So let's start with a simple gradient. And what I have is this photo on the base layer. And I've given you an example of what my gradient is going to be up here. I've actually created a rectangle that is exactly that gradient. And I've just put it over my photo. And what I can do is I can just change the opacity of that rectangle a little bit. And we can see our photo appearing below the gradient. And what's really important to understand about gradients is that they follow a direction. So you can see this gradient here is going from left to right. And if you looked at my other video on the fill tool, you'll know we can have radial gradients, we can have elliptical gradients, we can have different directions, but really the order of the colors in this gradient is going to determine the way they appear. So if I select this top rectangle, I can take my fill tool and I can have it go in different directions. But it's always gonna be this order of blue, pink, and orange, or the reverse if I go the other way. So the way you can think of it is the gradient is very linear. It's putting the colors in a certain order. Now the order can point in different directions based on my fill tool, but you know, it's going to always be this pattern. Now let's look at a gradient map and I'll show them side by side afterwards, but first let's just look at the gradient map. So what I've done is I've applied this adjustment to my image here and I'll turn it on. And this is the gradient map that is being applied. So you can see it's a very similar gradient to what our original gradient was. And actually I've just duplicated it up here. But the big difference is that the gradient map is not applying a gradient left to right or in any direction. Rather, it's mapping the colors to the equivalent values in the image. So you can see I've made this value scale below the color scale. So what it's doing is it's taking the blue and it's mapping it to the blacks. And you can see the parts of the image that would be really dark here, like the backpack and the pants. These are gonna be more in the dark blue purple area. The kind of middle tone areas, these are getting that magenta. So this is all kind of middle tone in here, mid tone. And then the brightest parts of our image are getting mapped to the orange over here. So the sky is really bright. So that's why it's getting orange. So this is kind of like one example of the way the colors are going. So it's taking the blue, it's mapping it to the black, and it's saying, where is this black appearing in the image? And of course, these arrows are just one example. It's mapping this all over the whole image itself. So here I have the gradient and the gradient map side by side, just to really show the example. So you can see our gradient is following a direction from left to right. Whereas our gradient map doesn't care about left to right, it cares about the darkest values to the lightest values. So this was an example of the difference between gradients and gradient maps. Let me give you some more information now about how to actually create a gradient map. A gradient map is a type of adjustment layer, and I have several videos on my channel about adjustment layers, so check those out if you wanna learn how they work from the ground up. But what I'll say for this video is that if I click my image here, you can add an adjustment layer by clicking this kind of half filled in circle here, and we're going to choose gradient map. And the way adjustment layers work is that if you expand your layer, you can see the adjustment is added to your object, in this case, an image. So I can toggle it off and on just by clicking the little visibility option here. And it's non-destructive. So this is the default gradient map. And as you can see, it's not super useful. It's red, green, blue. But again, let's review what's happening. The red is going to my shadows here. The green is the midtones, and the blue is the highlights. Now what I did ahead of time is I got some colors that I wanna use for my gradient map instead. Now these are some of the default ones from Affinity Photo, but I just brought them over here in a little swatch area to copy. So let's change the red. And I think the red is the same anyway. Yeah, it's just red. But the green, we can do the orange here. I'll select that. And for the blue, I'll select the yellow. And now this is how our image looks with the gradient map applied. Now the key to a gradient map is actually changing the blend mode. And you have this option here. So I can click this button and drag down and select different blend modes. 
I actually don't like to do it there. I'll close this. You can also do it over here. So I have the, the gradient map selected and I can change the blend mode with this button here. And by the way, I'm preparing a video on all the blend modes in Affinity products. That'll be out in about a week or so. So if you wanna check out that video when it comes out, be sure to subscribe to my channel because that'll make it much more likely that it's recommended to you. And it also helps support this channel. But in the meantime, what I'll show you is that the blend mode I like a lot is soft light and I'll select this. And now you can see a much more interesting effect. And I often call this one almost like the Polaroid effect. It looks like a 70s Polaroid photo to me. Now let me toggle it off and on so you can see the difference. So this is with on, off, on, off. And of course, what you can do is you can change the opacity. So if the effect is too strong, you can dial it down. I can dial it down to nothing or I can boost it up a little bit. You can also add other adjustments if you like. So curves, we can do our classic little S curve here. So off, on, off, on. And that's really how gradient maps work. This tool, you can do all the standard gradient effects with it. You can reverse it. You can add new points in there. Anything with a normal gradient you can do. Now let's consider the case where we wanna transfer the style or the feel of one image to another. So here I have two images and let's say I want the colors of this one on the left to have more of an influence on this image on the right. Now there are a couple ways to get our color options here. One thing people do is they go to swatches and then you can click create palette from image. And if you have the source image on your computer, you can select it with this button here. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna have some default number here and it's gonna choose some colors from the image. And a lot of times you can go down to three and click preview to get an update. And now we have these colors here. But there's a method I like a little more, so I'm gonna cancel this. And I actually prefer just selecting the colors myself. So let me create three rectangles here. So this is gonna be my palette here from darkest to lightest. So I can select my square. And what I like to do is I like to color pick from my image and find something that represents the shadows. So maybe this dark green here. And I'll assign that to my square on the left here. So that's gonna be our dark color. Let's look for a mid-tone. Probably somewhere around here looks good. I'll select that one. And now let's look for a highlight. And there's no right answer to this. You can kind of look around and see what you like. Maybe I'll take her hat here. I like stuff with a little bit of color in it. I could have gone for the sky, but the sky is so pure white that I think um, it would be a little more boring. So I wanted to go for something with a little bit of a hue to it. So these are the three colors that I chose. And now what I can do is I can go to my target image and I can go to adjustment layer and I can add a gradient map. And as per usual, we get our red, green, and blue, which isn't that amazing, but let's select our chosen colors. So this is what our gradient map looks like with our colors. And I'll change the blend mode to soft light. So you can see it has a little more of the feel of this image over here on the left. Let me toggle it off and on. So this is on, off, on, off. And the great thing is that with these gradient maps, you can always toggle them live in real time. So perhaps maybe, maybe this green I can change a little bit. Maybe the middle, I wanna put it more towards orange or something. The highlight, is there something better I can do there? I really think that when you select the colors from the other image, that should just be a starting point and you can go and tweak them to suit your needs and to see what looks best in your destination photo. So you can see we did change this a little bit. So here's an example of the before and after side by side. And I did add some curves and a little bit of vibrance, but most of this is really the gradient map doing the work. So that's the way I like to choose my colors. I like to do it manually. I think it really helps develop your eye more to see what you want in your photos. Now something you can also do is use gradient maps as a basis for compositing images. So here I have my original image here on the left. And ahead of time, I made my palette here of the colors that I think would be a good representation of that image. And over here, I have a transparent image that I can move over my source image here. Let's give it a gradient map. And I'll choose my colors, brown, kind of this lighter brown, and my highlight. And I'll set my gradient map to soft light. So you can see that it definitely matches much better than before. Let me toggle it before and after. So this is before, after, before, after. Now the lighting of these two images is like fundamentally different and the focus, but you know, it gives you a good idea of how you could start to have a basis for compositing multiple images together. As usual, you could always edit the curves for her. Maybe she's a little darker. Like I said, the light is different, so it's not gonna look perfect, but you know, this gives you an idea of what's possible. Do you still have any questions about gradient maps? Feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.